Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part 44 of my Hulkbuster cosplay project. In part 43, I cut the ankles off and made sure I could walk in the suit. So the only opportunity I'd had to test it was in part 42A at DEFCON, which is a charity event in Southampton, which I spent quite a long time getting ready for in the previous parts and then found I couldn't actually walk in the suit. And I haven't been able to test in this room because of the sloping ceiling here, which is actually the roof of the house and I couldn't lean side to side. But I've since found sawing the ankles off actually means I can naturally move better and I can in fact walk carrying the suit and everything else and that happened last time. So this time I'm going to be building the ankle locks so I can still stand that suit up by itself. Then I can climb into it and unlock it, walk around and when I'm bored I can lock it up again and climb out and just leave it standing there. And that's a feature of the suit that I've wanted since the very first part. So let's have a look at those ankles. Here is one of the legs. So um, what I did was cut the wood down here, so I cut the ankles off and this now means the top half can move in all directions which means I can finally walk in it. Um, but obviously in order for it to stand up by itself I need to lock those ankles in all directions so that I can actually put the suit back on the top. So uh, let's just see, where's the camera? Right, so on the top we've got this bushing made of Ninja Flex and a bungee that locks onto the torso and the torso sits on, on the top there. In order for that to remain upright, obviously it's no good if the ankles are really bendy. So we need to make a substantial lock to go down at the bottom, uh, which will lock that. So let's look at the other ankle. Here is the other ankle, and what I've done is just clamped in these poles. So I've got two sort of aluminium poles in here, and they've got two clamps on the top part and one on the bottom. And even though they're just clamped on with these clamps, which are pretty loose, um, I'm just experimenting to see where I need to put the locking points in. So uh, that stops it twisting, it won't move in any direction, there is some sort of twist in the wood and so on, but in fact it looks like the two locking points on the sort of shin here, or the calf, and one on each of the bottom works quite well. So what I need to do is devise a system whereby um, those three points can get locked and there's still a catch that either slides up or slides down or something like that and it's challenging because as well as um, not moving sideways they actually need to not move up and down. So if they're sliding poles that drop down they need to be locked at the bottom so they don't lift up and they need to be locked at the top so they don't lift up or down otherwise this will still obviously be able to move backwards and forwards. So I need to think of a way of having some sort of lock which is permanently attached. It also needs to be activated by cables or something from where I'm standing and also locks in those three points in all directions. Here is a rather bizarre looking thing. Um, so basically the circle right at the top here is a pivot point which is the top pivot point on the back of the calf. The next one down is another locking point and that will then obviously slide onto a peg as the thing pivots around the top pivot point. Then the one at the bottom is the, the sort of lock for the ankle, so that will slide onto another peg. Um, I'm hoping this whole thing is going to be pushed apart by some sort of cam or a separate mechanism and sprung inwards. And that will then hopefully lock all of those in place so they can't move around. Um, we're going to have to see how well that works. Um, but I'm pretty sure that's the simplest solution for now. So this is going to be printed in multiple parts. So here it is split in two and this is going to be solvent welded and screwed together and I have to print it in two parts so it fits on the print bed. Now it is going to be a 3D print and yes it is sort of supporting the weight of Hulkbuster but not all of it. Really it's just stopping rotation and most of the weight is getting supported on that big pin that I put in last time. So I'm going to get a couple of these printed and um, try and sort of put them in there and see how strong they seem and see whether that works well. So I've printed off some of these. Um, I've put one of these together in one piece. There's two screw holes here that are really for alignment, but I've actually solvent welded this together, so it's pretty strong. Obviously they were printed in two parts that get fixed together, so I need to do that one. At the top I've got a pivot point, and I've printed this thing, which is a bit like a top hat, with a bolt hole in, and that bolts in there. So it's slightly higher, which means this can be bolted down flat, and this can rotate around it. 
And then I've got these two locking points I mentioned. So I've got two more pieces, another top hat. So as this pivots, it will pivot into that. And then I've got another piece that's a rather funny shape that fits perfectly in here, which again, as this pivots, it will hopefully pivot straight into there and lock. And again, these get bolted down. So these are my two uh, top uh, locking points. And this is the point on the ankle. And of course, um, this has got a brim on it as well, which means once this is slotted in here, it can't twist because it's on the wood on the back. It can't lift and it can't move up and down. And the same for this one, hopefully. So I'm going to bolt these on now and we'll see how well that works. So I've just clamped this in here in place of one of those bits of metal. So just put the clamps where the locking points would be at the top and the bottom so I can position all the screws and hopefully get that in there. So I'm just going to put some wood screws in for now, but eventually they will be bolted in with M6 bolts. I fitted both of those in place now, so they both uh, got the top mounting points and also the bottom one here and over here. So you'll notice those are at slightly different angles, which works quite well. So this one is braced against the main pivot point. And this one is braced back. And the reason for that is so that this is at an angle where any weight pushing down here pushes it on more. So with both of those in, um, it's pretty stable. You can see this is braced quite well against the bolt here. There's some wiggle, but not too much. Um, and whatever I do, it won't, uh, it won't push this off here which is quite good, and the same on the other side. So here's the uh, bracket here, and no matter how much force and wiggle I put on, it always stays on. But if I want to remove them to unlock the leg, then I can just pull these backwards. I need to have some sort of uh, mechanism that does this and keeps them backwards so they don't just fall forwards again. Um, and the same with this one. And then my whole leg can rotate round, as it did, and I should be able to walk in it. And then I can just slot these back in. And it's all locked up again, and it's pretty secure. Right, I've put both of them in there, so I've got all of my four supports and all of the plugs and all of the things that go with them. So um, obviously at the moment these would have to be unlatched manually, so I'd have to have an assistant come and pull these out. They aren't quite tight at the top, so they will stay in place. Um, eventually I will have a mechanism that does this, and it's cable controlled. I also need a new mechanism to undo the snowboard bindings. Um, because I've had to remove that now. It was cable controlled, but it was attached to one side here. It wasn't great. It was a, a cable controlled slider that pushed a bolt and pushed this off. And then I just had a strap that I pulled behind me to pull these up so I could do them remotely. What I really need is a mechanism that um, deals with all of those things. Uh, it's probably something a bit better that uh, does the locks and does the snowboard boots. One thing I will point out, even though these are 3D prints, they're nearly 40% density, so they're fairly tough. Um, each one of these took about five hours to print on a fairly fast printer, which was the Lolzbot Taz. So they are pretty sturdy. I'm pretty confident that they're not going to break. But I do need to check if I can put Hulkbuster back on the top, or at least a torso, and see what stability is like. So here we go. I have now the torso propped on the top, uh, which seems to be okay. Yeah, there's a bit of clay, but a lot of that's wobbling on the actual carpet. There's a bit of twist, but it seems to, on the whole, hold itself up. And probably what I'll do, um, if I do actually leave this standing at another event like DEF CON, um, is put some actual extra latches on these parts, just to hold them in place so they definitely don't wobble out. And I'll also probably put sticks in the back, which I had before, which actually, some bits of wood that clamp between the torso and the ankles that just stop that extra wobble in case someone pulls it over on themselves. Pretty much this, two sticks which are just clamped on, that just gives it some extra stability when it's standing. Obviously I'll remove those just before I get in, which is actually what I did before. What I really want to build for those um, locks is a kind of cable controlled thing where they're sprung in and that also holds them out. And I did a very similar thing for the knee, so the locking me mechanism of the knee is this bolt that goes through the two pieces here. Just see its head poking out. And that works by turning this um, piece here which has got a, a kind of bolt on and it pushes that bolt out but the bolt is sprung so this um, bolt is actually sprung and it's on a four bar link 
which means it pops in, but also if you go far enough and this turns past a certain point, this is sprung now against an end stop, so it stays there, and that's how the knees work. So that knee's now unlocked. I have to be quite careful it doesn't all tip over. Uh, obviously, turning the um, wheel there the other way pops it back in. So that works really well. And now that's completely locked because the bolt is through. So I need to design something similar to that for both the snowboard bindings and for all of those four locks. The next logical step would be to stick the leg panels back on and try walking in it. Obviously I need an assistant to undo those latches for now till I have some sort of mechanism where I can undo them myself from a standing position. Obviously I need to support the suit when I undo them, otherwise the whole thing will fall down before I can get into it. Um, so I really want to think through that mechanism. Well, the other option of course is build the mechanism then test it on my own which I can do in here. Um, but I really need to think that through, it's not something I want to rush into. So I'm not going to do that in this episode, it's going to be something that I revisit in the future and I really want to build a proper mechanism because it's really critical I get it right. I don't want to have to revisit it again after that and put it right. So in fact what's going to happen is I'll try and squeeze in a walking test sometime with someone else to help me, but in the meantime I'm going to work on the helmet. So the next episode is going to be rather more interesting. I'm going to be making the mechanism to lift this whole helmet up and open it, including lifting the faceplate. Um, I really want to concentrate more on sort of clever mechanisms and control electronics in my channel. So this is a really good thing to get on with. Um, there's lots of things I could be doing, like making the back panels and painting up more foam and sticking them on, although I got bored of that myself, frankly, so I will be doing that in the future. What I'd like to do in the short term is sort out all the technical stuff, because I think that's really interesting. So that's what's going to happen next time. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel to check out more updates on this project and other projects. Also check out the social media links in the description to this video.